My name is Dominic Vella. I'm an associate professor at the Mathematical Institute here in Oxford. In my research, I develop mathematical models to understand phenomena that I observe in the everyday world. Poking is a really natural um, way of humans reaching out into the world. It's very natural to touch something to feel how hard or soft it is. And the purpose of developing mathematical models of poking is that it enables us to quantify what poking is telling us. Generally, the mathematical modelling approach will begin with an everyday example or a natural phenomena that we want to understand. The idea then is that you try and extract the important physical ingredients for what's giving you that phenomena and reduce it down to the simplest possible ingredients. For example, a very simple way of thinking about a yeast cell is to think of it in the same way that we think about a beach ball. It's a thin shell that's internally pressurised. There are a lot of people in biology interested in understanding cells like the yeast cell that have a pressure pushing them out. And the way they like to measure that pressure is to gently push on the shell. So what I was really interested in doing is trying to understand how that stiffness that you measure when you poke gently is related to the material properties of the cell wall and also the internal pressurisation. What we really want to, to give them is simple formulae that tell them how their system behaves. So the first step is really to try and modify the classic theory of elastic shells to include the effect of the internal pressurisation. But what's key about mathematical modelling is that you, you try to look for simplifications in those equations that allow you to get explicit formulae telling you if I put so and so parameters in, then I should see this number come out. The model predicted that the stiffness of the shell should depend on the pressure which we write with this letter tor according to this formula. And one thing I really like about this is the simplicity of, of the result. You would never guess the, the beautiful um, combination of uh, a square root here and this arctanch down here and I think it's a really nice uh, example of mathematical modelling giving you results that are really unexpected and aesthetically pleasing. Once we had made progress with the analytical model there were two steps in, to follow up. The first was to compare the results of your modelling to more detailed simulations on a computer. And then we also did our own laboratory experiments where we inflated a, a giant beach ball and for different pressures measured how the stiffness changed. And what we're looking for is to see how well this formula, which is a prediction of the model, compares to the results from the simulations and the results from the experiments. And when we do that, we find that it goes beautifully through all of the points suggesting that this model, the simple mathematical model, really does predict the results of quite a complex physical system very well indeed. So at this stage we've, we've solved the problem that we set out to do, but our collaborators carried on um, producing numerical simulations. And one thing that they found was that actually the, you got very strange patterns in the shape of the, of the shell, and when I looked at in the nuts and bolts of what I'd done previously, I realised the strange patterns that they were seeing were actually wrinkles, the wrinkles that you'd see when um, a beach ball is poked. If you look at the pattern of wrinkles that we have here, from the number of wrinkles, it's actually possible to work out what the pressure inside the shell is. So the beauty of having developed a mathematical model and validated it with experiments and simulations is that we can not only apply it to the yeast cells that originally motivated our research, but we can also look for other scenarios where similar physical ingredients are at work. And because the model is generic, there are a whole host of other applications to which it could be applied.